Did you ever want to measure the internal case volume of your cases, but you just didn't want to take the time to do it? Well, today we're going to be talking about the fastest way that I'm aware of to measure case volume, the Bison Armory case volume gauge. Today, I'm going to show you what does work well and what really doesn't work well with this new tool. If I had to describe this tool in just one word, it's fiddly. If you're easily frustrated, don't waste your time. Also, if you're not in a space that has reasonable temperature control, you probably don't want to waste your time with it either. And I'm going to show you why I believe this in just a second. Now, if you've ever done any case value measurements with liquid, I'm not going to have to tell you how long it takes, and then frankly, it's not very much fun. Probably why a lot of guys don't bother. Some people as well have taken to weighing cases, pretending this is going to show the discrepancies from case volume from case to case, but that's a different video for another day. What can this tool really do? According to the website, it says we can rapidly and accurately measure rifle case capacity in three to five seconds per case. And that's probably fairly accurate as far as the time the measurement takes for one case. But there are wait times between cases. It's not slow, but it's not exactly that fast. Another thing it mentions is identifying split case necks and other defects. Great in case we missed it. It says we can quickly and easily measure the capacity of rifle cartridges from 223 all the way to 338 Lapua and other 33 caliber cartridges in just seconds using only the air in the room. And you're pressed to. Obviously we're only using air, so there's no liquid involved, but it does require a laptop, a desktop, or a tablet. So if you're not into having a computer on your loading bench, this might not be the tool for you either. Accuracy, it says plus or minus 0.2% of full scale with proper calibration. Approximately plus or minus 0.05 grains for a 223 case, and it also comes with a lifetime warranty. Now, compatible presses. This works with standard reloading presses like the RCBS Rock Chucker and turret presses like the Lyman Brass 8. This does not work with my favorite press, the Coax, or the Zero Press. You might notice that we currently have it installed on a Dillon 750. Well, this really isn't listed on the compatibility list either, but we'll get into that. On the bottom of the die, there's gaskets that your case mouth seals against when it's traveling up inside the die. Ordinarily, I would take this die apart to show you guys exactly what it's made of, but I don't have the food grade lubricant to reassemble it just in case I needed it. All you really need to know is that there's a couple of sensors on the die, as well as an absolute pressure transducer, which is taking the measurements. So three total sensors. The die has a cylinder that moves up and down in the body, and there's a gasket that seals off the neck of the case. Don't worry, they do give you extras. And when you insert the case in the die, it measures the pressure differential to know the case volume. If you want to look more into this, don't worry, all the details are there online. But other than the hardware itself, nothing comes with the die to show you how to use it. You're going to have to download the software off of their website, and when you install it, you're going to get security warnings. But if you follow the directions they give online, it did fire up just fine. Now I will say that I did reach out to their support section asking a question before I bought this. And frankly, I didn't get a response. So your mileage may vary when it comes to support. I ended up buying it anyway, and I was able to get it running with their online tutorials without too much effort. This is designed to run on a desktop or a tablet computer running Windows 10. They do also claim some compatibility with Apple Mac computer running Parallels or something similar. I have no idea what that is, because frankly, I'm just not an Apple person. Either way, I got it running with my Windows laptop, and I have it installed on my Dillon 750. After I got it up and running, I calibrated it, and they recommend two different cases. So I used a 223 case, as well as a 300 WinMag case. And I kind of went up on proving myself that this thing actually works. So a lot of the data generated is simply measuring repeatedly my 223 case that I calibrated the device with. And like you can see, it's installed on my Dillon 750. I don't know that they really officially support this configuration, but you know, it's my reloading bench. So you do you. I'm sure this configuration is not going to work with 338, but we're not working on that today. So you might wonder why I installed it on this press. Frankly, it's to minimize the amount of time I touch the cases. This is super important for this to work because it does not compensate for temperature shift, not that I expect it to, but this adds error. More error than I am willing to accept. What do I mean by this? Well, let's look at some data. Now, after I first started up, I had it sitting for somewhere around a half an hour just so it would warm up before I got started. And to prove to myself that it worked, I took 100 readings with that same 223 case. Not cycling it around, not touching it, just cycling it up and down in my press. And I'll put the graph of the measurements on the screen. You can see at the beginning it kind of starts off higher and goes lower, and it continues through these 100 readings on the same case. The measurement that I told the software that this was to calibrate to was 30.55 grains. We can see that the max volume read was 30.62 grains, while the minimum was 30.28 grains. Overall, the extreme spread was 0.34 grains of water. However, the standard deviation was only 0.07 grains. So what's really going on here? Well, I believe, frankly, at the beginning of this graph, 
that the temperatures in the system are still stabilizing, including the dye body itself. To be honest, I was pretty disappointed with the results initially, so after letting it sit for at least another hour, we repeated the test and performed a new calibration to start with. Again, our calibration volume was 30.55 grains. Out of these 100 rounds, the max case volume measure was 30.58 grains, and the minimum volume was 30.48. The extreme spread on these 100 readings was 0.1 grain of water. In my opinion, pretty decent. Standard deviation across all the measurements was 0.02 grains. Keep in mind our software said plus or minus 0.5 grains of the 223 case, so this is right in line with the expectations. A much better result, but a very long time to stabilize the temperature. One thing you may notice in the chart as well that I'm not sure if it was done stabilizing completely because as we continue to measure, it seems like the average value continues to go down. Again, possibly a temperature stabilization issue. So after I took those readings, I thought I'd go a little bit crazy. I let the system sit on overnight. Now, the next day I did not come back and recalibrate, I just started back over again. To be frank, taking a measurement of 100 rounds gets a little old, so we're only going to do 60 this time. One thing I will tell you about this is if you've let it sit for a little while, and I don't know why, it seems like the first reading is always high, and our data set shows it. The max value measured across the lot was 30.49 grains, and that was the highest measurement, again, the first measurement we took. However, again, we didn't recalibrate it. The max volume across those 60 readings was 30.49, the first one, and the minimum volume measured was 30.37. But looking at the graph, we can see that the baseline, if you want to call it that, was much more consistent. If we remove the very first reading from that data set, then it only had 59, the extreme spread goes right from 0.12 down to 0.1, and everything else essentially remains the same because there's so many data points. Again, the system seemed to meet the specification of plus or minus 0.05 grains. So a little bit more confidence restored in our system, but if we notice on this chart, to me, the baseline doesn't seem to be shifting. I really think that the temperature is finally stabilized, and that's why we don't see any shifting during these readings. So what if we wanted to measure a whole lot of brass? Pun intended. Well, here is an entire 100-piece lot of 223 Lapua brass, unfired. We can see across the 100-piece lot, the maximum volume measure was 30.23. The minimum volume was 30.09. So the extreme spread on a lot of Lapua 223 brass, again unfired, was 0.15 grains of water. Pretty darn good in my opinion. It gives me some confidence in the lot and the measurement device. Standard deviation across the whole lot was 0.03. Frankly, since this is unfired brass, I wouldn't be pulling out any flyers at this point. But if you wanted to, again, you could. The system is pretty basic and I switched my plate from 223 back to 6.5 just to give you an idea of what it looks like on a progressive. All I had to do was insert the case, wait for the ring to take place, pull it back out, let it stabilize, and do it again when it told me it was okay. Now at the point of making this video, I've probably measured somewhere in the ballpark of about 800 readings and as long as the temperature is consistent, I feel like the data is pretty consistent. For another fun example, here's a chart of about 20 unfired 6.5 Creedmoor Peterson brass cases. And again, we're going to suffer from that first piece is high reading. So it's something you need to look out for. Now, other people that have reviewed this die have stressed that the consistency of how you pull the handle is very critical. But frankly, it hasn't been a big deal for me. And the software has a undo last button. So if you get a reading that you feel is erroneous, just undo the last and take it again. I've certainly had some variation in my press stroke and I still haven't seen a lot of variation in the reading. In my opinion, the biggest problem with this system is temperature control. If you're loading in a place that doesn't have reasonably consistent temperatures, I think this tool is going to be very frustrating. If you can overcome the temperature consistency issues, I think this system is pretty neat. It's still a little fiddly, but it sure is certainly the fastest way to measure case volume that I have ever seen and I think it's going to hold up to the plus or minus 0.1 accuracy that some people use when sorting brass. Another fun feature of the software is it has log files so you can open them up in Excel, and for me it's really handy to be able to look at that data in the log so I can correlate it with some other data that we're going to take. Like, what if we were weighing cases? Does that data even correlate? Well that's the subject for another video, so if you want to see that make sure you subscribe. But if you really want to be concerned with eliminating the variation in your loads, Neck tension is something you should concentrate on, and you can learn a lot more about it in this playlist here. Consider supporting this crazy channel here on Patreon, and I hope to see you come back next week. And until then, stay safe in small groups.